I wanted to talk about uh, sort of a little bit of the residual Torah teachings from last week's uh, fellowship that we had together, because I spent a lot of time reflecting on some of the ideas that we learned um, regarding the creative power of suffering, because everybody suffers, uh, but uh, not everybody's aware, you know, of how suffering can be harnessed for growth and how it has the capacity to be a source of of light in our lives and in the world and how it's just part of the human condition. And in a lot of ways, it's a big gift if we're, if we're uh, tuned in to the, the art of how to channel it and how to really connect to the source through it. And, um, you know, and, and the teaching that really stayed with me, that really etched its way into my heart that I kept revisiting in my head uh, throughout the week was from chapter 45, verse 4. Right, it said, then Joseph said to his brothers, come close to me if you please. And they came close. And he said, I am Joseph, your brother. I am Yosef, your brother. It is me that you sold into Egypt. So that teaching, if you recall, was that the word asher doesn't mean that. Right? He, he wasn't saying, I am Joseph, your brother, that you sold into Egypt. Or rather, he was saying, I am Joseph, your brother, because you sold me into Egypt. You guys remember this one? It was such a teaching. I don't know why. You know, it, that it was because of his sale to Egypt, which made him into the righteous, holy, forgiving man that they saw before them at that very moment. I'm Joseph, this Joseph, this guy. I'm this Joseph because you sold me into Egypt. In some ways, giving them credit, but definitely taking a, a, the sting off of their sin in their own minds, because you can only imagine the crippling guilt. You know, Joseph sent years in prison, but I don't know during those years who was really more in prison, Joseph or his brothers, meaning a prison of their own making, a prison of their own guilt and shame. <laughs> Anyways, that teaching spoke to me so powerfully because it resonated, on, uh, you know, as, as such a deep truth regarding the journey of my life, that it was really the periods of the greatest confusion and suffering which brought forth those qualities, which I now considered my best ones, my most evolved qualities, uh, at least my best ones compared to what I had before, you know, compared to my previous characteristics. And then this Shabbat, um, I was with my sister and her children in, in Modi'in and, uh, you know, the city of the Maccabees. That's where the whole Maccabee journey started. Right now, it's like a, a, a big city between Jerusalem and Tel Aviv. It actually has a lot of the qualities of both Jerusalem and Tel Aviv mixed together in one city. And uh, anyways, the rabbi stood up and he shared an idea that really drove this point home to me in the most beautiful way. And so I just wanted to share that with all of you. He spoke about this uh, rather curious exchange that took place between the brothers and Yosef after the passing of their father Yaakov that we see in chapter 50, verses 15 through 17. Right, it says, and when Joseph's brothers saw that their father was dead, they said, Joseph will perhaps hate us and will certainly pay us back for all the evil which we did to him. And they sent the messenger to Joseph saying, your father did command before he died saying, so shall you say to Joseph, forgive, I beg you now, the trespasses of your brothers and their sin, for they did to you evil. And now we beg you, forgive the trespass of the servants of the God of your father. And Joseph wept when they spoke to him. I don't know, there's something also I've always felt like disappointing about this, that they had to, it's pretty, I think that this was a, clearly a lie that they said this and they're still in that place, but I guess fear makes you do things. It makes you say things. But the question that I've always had was what made them say this to Yosef? What made them so filled with fear? What, what happened to cause them this insecurity, this fear that Yosef would all of a sudden take vengeance upon them. So anyways, there's a midrash that says that on the way back from Yaakov's funeral in Hebron, the brothers passed near the spot into which Yosef was cast into the pit all those years ago. You can imagine there's like a weird energy there, and they probably wanted to take a circuitous roundabout route. But Yosef took a detour and he stopped at the pit. And he stood there staring into it in silence. And then in prayer. And this, uh, you know, looking at Yosef like that, uh, cast fear into their hearts, into the hearts of his brothers. And they feared the pain and the anger and the betrayal and the trauma 
of what they imagined was being revived in his heart. And uh, now that Yaakov, their father, had passed on, there would be nothing holding him back from taking vengeance. So uh, in this seeming act of, of desperation, and uh, Jeremy, I'm interested to hear if you think that or any of you in the fellowship uh, think also, I'm, I'm really open to this because I feel like I don't see it that clearly, but on some level, this is true. So in the seeming act of desperation, they concocted this plan in which they quoted their father, asking Yosef to forgive them and offering themselves as slaves. But I think what they didn't understand, the sages tell us, was that the content of Yosef's mind and his heart at the time, the content of Yosef's prayer as he stood there at the precipice of that pit, gazing inside, his prayer was the prayer that one is supposed to make at the spot where a miracle happened and their life was spared. I remember when I first came to Israel and there was this wonderful family, the Levines, that, you know, Charlie and Shelly Levine, they adopted me into their family. And uh, right around that time, Charlie, the father, got in a head-on collision on his way to work in the morning. And the other person died and Charlie was injured quite badly, but his life was spared. And then all the times that I drove with him in the morning, he said that every day as he passed that sacred spot where the accident happened, he made the blessing. Blessed are you, Lord, our God, King of the universe, who performed a miracle for me in this very place. And I would say amen every time, and we would talk about it every time. And I remember uh, when Shana and I flew to America together to receive her grandmother's blessing, right? The same Holocaust surviving grandmother after which our beloved Gvash is named. So, you know, as we were driving back uh, from the airport into New Jersey, I had Shana stop at one of my miracle places. And I say one of because my, uh, my near-death encounters have been quite a few. For those of you that know the story, bombings and stabbings and the World Trade Center and all sorts of stuff. But anyways, this was a highlight. This was a highlight near-death encounter for me. And so we stopped at the very spot where, uh, where it happened to me. I can tell you about it, but I actually, or not I, Shana actually dug up and found the video that I wanted to share with you. So here it is. And about 17 years ago, after I was in the army in Lebanon and Hebron and Gaza in the Israeli army, I came here to New York for a year and a half to get my degree at Yeshiva University. I'd been here about two weeks and I was in this very place 17 years ago, late at night wearing a kippah and seat seat and I got stabbed in the back and in the arm just walking down the street right here, which was an interesting thing to have happen considering I was finally in New York, in America, a safe place and out of the line of fire in Israel and I got stabbed right here in New York in front of this very building. I haven't been back here since. And as I was driving by, I said, maybe I should get out and I should make a bracha, make a blessing, because it was miraculous. I got stabbed in the back and it missed all the important stuff. I got four stitches in my back, two in my arm, in the hospital for a few hours and I was out, and that was a miracle. So I thought I would share with all of you as I make a bracha in this place. Baruch Ata Adonai, Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, Thank you, Hashem. Blessed are you, Hashem, our Lord, our God, King of the Universe, who made a miracle for me in this very, very place in New York City. So Jews in New York, Jews in America, just remember, it's not the safest place in the world. A lot of crazy things happen. Burned here. I got stabbed here. I saw the World Trade Center come down. Israel's a safer place. Just consider that. <laughs> Jeremy, did you tell Tabitha to cut my message short as I was about to no, launch I, it? No, I didn't. I didn't. I did. That just happened. But I think it's hysterical to watch you already like 10 years ago be like, get out of America. It's dangerous. <laughs> it's, uh, well, it's sort it's of the, the message like, sort of lent it itself. Down. It's the message sort of le lent itself to that. But anyways, what is the nature of that blessing? Right. What is its essence? It's gratitude. It's thankfulness. It's a recognition that Hashem has been guiding and, and uh, orchestrating the events of our lives. And I believe that, that life-saving miracles are there to remind us that every moment is a life-saving miracle. Uh, every moment is a source of blessing 
and gratitude. Every moment could be our last for any number of reasons. And that's what I think shocked me about uh, this situation. It seems that Joseph's brother still didn't recognize who their brother really was. They still didn't really see Yosef. They still didn't fathom that Yosef wasn't marinating in anger and in resentment, but he was constantly bathing himself in gratitude and thankfulness, constantly reorienting and reframing what happened to him and seeing it through a divine prism and not through a prism of man's own you know, resentment and, and, uh, and hatred. Anyways, in many ways, that stabbing, while it was traumatizing, and I actually still have physical pain from it, you know, it healed up really well. And then like six years ago, I started getting this crippling pain emanating directly from the stab wound. And I went to this doctor and that doctor and this doctor, and nobody could tell me what it was. I never even correlated the pain to the stab wound, but it turned out that I finally went to one doctor that said, oh, absolutely, that's where it's from. Spiritual stuff, emotional stuff, but also scar tissue stuff is coming up and I've been going through it. And so it was, it was traumatizing and I still have physical pain from it. But it was that stabbing that was a turning point in many ways for me, after which I really, really started feeling that I'm living on borrowed time, that it's silly for me to hedge my bets and take the road more traveled, that I shouldn't be here anyways. You know, go for the gold, live my dreams, follow my heart. There's no question that when I personally decided to sink everything I had into these barren hills and plant my roots two kilometers, you know, over a mile away from my closest neighbor, that, that, that part of that willingness to put it out, all out on the line came from that stabbing. Uh, Jeremy, I don't know what your excuse is. I don't think you had too many, you know, life, life-threatening miracles happen to you. I don't know where you got it from, but I guess you didn't need it. You're a higher level than me functioning at a higher level, but but either way, much you know, higher. I want to bless. Much higher. Sorry? I'm much higher. Much higher. Much, much higher. higher. Absolutely. <laughs> but uh, but I want to bless all of us, my friends, that we should be able to look back at our suffering and to bless it. And not only bless the suffering, but bless the vehicle with which it was inflicted upon us. And not only that, but the highest level. I want to bless us all. Hashem should bless all of us, that we should have the faith and the trust and the presence of mind to bless the suffering, not only looking back at it, but while we are in it, that, that the greatest suffering we have, we should be able to say, even at the time, Baruch Atah Hashem Elokeinu Melech HaOlam Sha'asal Li Nes, that is made for me a miracle in this very place.